is Dr. Clayton Lane. In this video, we'll talk about microfracture. This is the second in a series of videos on cartilage restoration in the knee. Again, to go through the surgical options for treating cartilage injuries, first we have microfracture, which will be the topic of this video. There's also open reduction and internal fixation in which we fix a fragment of bone or cartilage that's broken off if it uh, fits well into place and has not been fragmented. There's also osteochondral autologous transfer or OATS procedure in which we take cartilage from an area in the knee where we don't need it and transfer it to an area of defect where we do. Autologous chondrocyte implantation is another option. In that case, we take your own cells, grow them in a lab till they uh, have a significant volume as seen here, and then we reimplant those into your knee six weeks later to restore the cartilage at the defect site. And then finally, there's allograft, and in this case, a piece of bone and cartilage is taken from a cadaver and implanted into the area of cartilage defect in the knee. So to understand microfracture, we'll go through a real life case. This is a 46 year old female, comes in complaining of pain for four months after a fall into her right knee. X-rays were normal, and my detailed physical examination revealed really only some tenderness on the inside of the knee and pain with squatting. She didn't have any instability, no catching or popping or mechanical symptoms in the knee. And also she had presented with an MRI which showed some minor changes in the meniscus and the cartilage, but nothing significant. Therefore, we went on to treat her conservatively at first, a trial of non-operative treatment. That included glucosamine chondrite and sulfate, which is an over-the-counter supplement for the joints, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, in many cases we can use hyaluronic acid. I didn't in this particular case, but the idea there is to lubricate the joint and help smooth off the rough edges from a cartilage injury. I did have her modify her activity and do low impact exercise such as stationary bike and elliptical as opposed to running or walking on the road for exercise. And I also restricted her work activities and had her do some physical therapy. However, she came back at eight weeks and she was still having pain in the same spot and her exa examination was very consistent to what it had been before. So after some discussion, we determined to proceed with an arthroscopy. If you're not familiar with arthroscopy, here's what the typical setup looks like. We have two high definition uh, TV screens and you can see in my left hand here with the white cord is the camera which I'll show up close here on the bottom left and you can see how small that camera is and we can insert it through a very small incision in the knee and use various instruments to uh, perform procedures through incisions smaller than the size of your little fingernail. Here's what we saw in this case. Uh, this image doesn't project very well, but you can see clearly in the middle grade four injury where there's cartilage uh, worn away all the way down to bone. And then if I can outline for you, uh, there's actually about a one centimeter to two centimeter area of grade three and four changes here. And this is right where she hurts, very consistent with her examination. So I knew that this is the problem that needed to be dealt with. We determined in this case to proceed with microfracture. Again, to understand microfracture, we have to remember that cartilage does not have a blood supply. So here we see a diagram of the bone of the femur, the cartilage that lines the femur, the opposing cartilage of the tibial side, and then here's the tibia itself. So this diagram shows a defect in the cartilage on the femur side and it shows how the blood is not able to reach that defect to allow the inflammatory cells and pluripotential stem cells to get in and uh, allow healing. So to begin a microfracture, first what we need to do is create a well-contained lesion like what you do see in this diagram. So the lesion that you saw before with the regular edges, I take a curette and a knife in some cases and I outline a smooth oval or circular area with largely vertical walls to create a well-contained lesion. Once we have that well-contained lesion created, then we can 
uh, percutaneously insert a small drill or Stedman picks and place drill holes in the subchondral bone as seen here, two to three millimeters apart. And uh, you can see how, what that looks like on the diagram to the right. And then when we let the tourniquet down, you can see blood flows into the area of the defect, filling the, quotes frying pan or pothole area. And this brings pluripotential cells from the bone marrow into the region. And these cells can become cartilage-like cells. And in the end, over many months, uh, fill the defect with what's called fibrocartilage. Now, fibrocartilage is not as good as regular cartilage. It's not as strong, it's not as elastic, and it's not as smooth. However, you can see how it would be better than having nothing here. And that has been shown to bear out with the patient's uh, reduction in pain after surgery. So in summary, microfracture is a simple surgical procedure to treat cartilage injury. It establishes blood flow to a defect in cartilage. This results in scar tissue that is almost as good as cartilage. It's ideal for small, isolated defects in cartilage in patients with low to medium activity levels.